Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to use SKM. Um, this is a decent, going to be a decent intro. Um, so here I have a, a single line already made, um, and so we're going to be making a new single line today. Um, so typically when you start a project, uh, it, it comes in with one single line. So to create a new single line, you just come up here to project, take that back. I think you go to document, one line. Um, this is a little nuanced because then you're thinking this is only an open. If you if you type in a name here and then you hit open, it'll ask you, do you want to create a new one? Um, so I've actually already done that here. And uh, that is that is this one right here. And so um, you typically don't want it all the way full screen. You kind of want it um, like this and you'll see why in a second. So we'll start by doing the utility. So you come up here to the utility icon, place that in. You typically then have a fuse after it. We'll then do our transformer. Um, and then um, when they provide us with the utility data, it's supposed to be at the panel. Um, so you don't need it. You shouldn't have to worry about the secondary conductors coming off of the transformer typically. Um, actually, I take that back. It is at the secondary of the transformer. Um, so if it's a pull mounted transformer, I guess you do actually need to worry about that. So I take that back. So to delete something in Easy Power, you first need to disconnect it. And then you need to come down here to destroy it. The delete key does not work. Um, to put in the cable, it's this icon here. Then we'll put in a bus. We're going to expand that bus. Um, and so, for example, today we're going to be making a single line that looks like this. This is for a uh, a sh an animal shelter. So um, we're just we're just building this this one out right here. So not not too many breakers to do. We'll then um, start throwing in some breakers. So I'll do a breaker, a cable, and then my end device being um, a bus. So we'll separate it out like that. Um, I then grab all that with a selection set. I right click on it. I hit clone. And this is the fastest way to kind of take building blocks. And you want to space them out um, evenly. That way, when you do actually bring in data data for the um, cable or the uh, uh, breaker, nothing's overlapping. So make sure you give yourself plenty of space. Um, try to get them obviously spaced out correctly. And from here, um, you're good to go. And I made one error, so I'm going to fix that real fast. Um, based off my single line, I actually have a CT cabinet. First, and that CT cabinet actually splices the utility service. So we're going to do a cable here and here. One of these goes to a um, Fuse disconnect. So I think we'll just put this and then a bus for it. We'll spread that stuff out later. And then my main board here actually does not have a main circuit breaker. And I'm just going to go and destroy these since none of them are connected anymore. Okay, now that we've got the um, basic framework laid out, we can go ahead and do uh, bus naming. So to do this, um, you just double click on your bus and we're gonna call this um, CT cabinet three phase. This utility has, this service has um, two phases. That's why I'm calling it three phase, or sorry, two services, one phase and three phase. Um, so you can either hit the close button and that will update it automatically Alternatively, um, so when I name my MVP here, um, if I name it MVP three phase, if I just click off of it, it doesn't auto update, but next time I double click on something else, you can see it auto updates. Um, so now you're gonna start putting in breaker information. So I know that this one right here is actually, um, well, I guess I should probably label my 
end device here. And so this is actually going to um, sub A is the name of that panel. And when I start putting in breaker information here, I'm going to take a look at my, my breaker. This is a um, Siemens breaker, I believe. Yes, Siemens, and it is of type QP. So we'll just double click on our breaker here, and we're going to hit library. It's going to load up the library devices. Um, this is a 60 amp breaker, so it's going to be thermal magnetic. Um, so make sure that you, in the low voltage breaker settings here, you, you pick um, thermal magnetic, not the static, not the ground fault. Uh, you can go ahead and sort by manufacturers. And then for the type, we can just type in QP, do a search, and that should come up. And I'm just going to select the two and three pole. Okay, that's loaded in now. So I'm going to come back to here. We're just going to do the drop down frame. And we're going to do a 70 amp with a 60 amp drip. And you can verify your instantaneous settings, things like that. And that is now in. Um, and we noticed that we're not seeing any um, actual information regarding uh, the items that we just put into the model. So um, now we're going to handle that. So you just right click in the background, go to data block format. And um, this might take a little trial and error here, but we're going to do um, input data first. And I'm just going to hit apply and see what that comes up with. Um, so that seems to only be bringing in um, transformer data and um, wire information. Um, so instead, I'm going to try protective device data. And so I'll apply that. Um, and that seems to be bringing in everything that we want. And um, this goes back to make sure you get your spacing right. You can see that we're already overlapping some, things, some items here. So I'm going to move um, some things down. OK. Um, I do believe that they actually have like align tools and things like that uh, someplace up in here. There's annotations. Yeah, here's like some aligns. I've never used any of this, but just be aware of that. Um, if you need to change what your data blocks are doing, we'll come back to our data block and we can actually start with this protected device data and I'll hit edit on it. And you can see here, you can select by component type. And so for bus, um, well, so for cable, it's, it's going to display these these things here, the quantity, cable size, and length, which is what we want. Um, and then for pr protective devices, you know, if you wanted to get rid of um, some of these settings here, you, you definitely could. OK, and so now we're going to talk about how you can um, quickly apply data. Uh, across several instances. So um, let's just say this breaker right here is a QP. Um, I would just right click on it and uh, you just go to copy data and then base data. And then that comes in. Notice the breaker names are still independent, which is what we want. And if I need to change the trip settings, obviously it's a double click. You then go to settings and you can change it in here. Um, that's a quick way to copy the type of breaker that you have. You can do the same thing with cables. Um, so it's pretty useful if you got you know a bunch of number twos, um, and then you just figure out your lengths um, independently. Okay, now we're going to go over how to run um, calculations. Then um, specifically, I'm only going to touch on arc flash calculations right now. So you're just going to come up here to run, then arc flash evaluation. Um, once this comes up, just double check that you're using the latest um, IEEE 1584 standards, which is 2018 at the time of recording. Um, distance and boundaries, inches or feet, um, that, and then we'll come over here to fall current. Um, we know um, that the IEEE um, standards recommend that we cut off our calculation times for um, incident energy at two seconds. Um, so if a um, breaker doesn't trip within two seconds, uh, just go ahead and cut off the incident energy calculations. Um, it's assumed that somebody would be able to get out of the way uh, within two seconds, that they'd be able to react. Um, so we'll check all this. Um, looks fine to me. I'm not seeing anything standing out here. Um, and then report options. We'll just take a look at this. Um, and just kind of go over some of this stuff. And then lastly, on the 
report options, um, it's very important that you check this setting. Um, if, uh, if you do not check a specific box within that setting, uh, SKM will not determine if upstream devices could have tripped. Um, so if you have um, miscoordinated devices, uh, SKM is not going to check that without the setting. Um, and so just in report options, it's, it's this box right here, and you can tell it um, how many upstream levels to search for. Um, so we'll come back to our SKM model. We need to check this, and um, we're going to do um, five levels. Um, I'm not sure what the miscoordination ratio is. You're going to have to check the doc documentation on that. Um, and you can start setting up some of this stuff, too, if need be. I'm not too familiar with it. I will hit OK. Now it's going to run those um, calculations. Apparently, nominal voltage on some of my cables hasn't been set, so I'll have to take a look at that. Um, but now you're going to get this, uh, your, your report here. And we can see our incident energy is, is in this column right here. Um, it looks like it actually ran it for both of my single lines right now. I think both of them are open. Um, and, and that's why I got uh, one of my single lines isn't finished. That's why I got that error then. Um, I'm not sure how I could have limited it to just this single line. I'm sure if I closed it, I probably would have done it. But um, from here, you can then go and um, start printing out labels. Uh, I think if you come up here to your custom label, um, you can then pull in a template and um, start getting underway um, with that.